Your hand over your heart. Face the flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. One nation, two God, individual liberty and justice for all. Moving on to uh, roll call. President Adonis Galarza Toledo. Uh, present. Vice President Jesus Gonzalez. Present. Jocelyn Vargas. Present. Joey Acuña. Here. Trinidad Arredondo. Present. Valerie Garcia. Present. Silvia Paz. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to closed session. Can I get a motion to enter into closed session? Almost. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez. Second. Second by Mr. Arredondo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We'll be back at 6.30. To enter into open session. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Mr. Arredondo. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Motion carries 6 0. Um, Madam Clerk, any action taken in closed session? Yes. Uh, the board took action during closed session to appoint uh, Tara Hitchin as coordinator of curriculum instruction assessment at the district office, office effective. Friday, July 14, 2023. On this 13th day of July, motion was made by Mr. Arredondo, seconded, seconded by Mr. Gonzalez, and the motion passed. Uh, the board took action, action during closed session to appoint Emily Cox as middle school assistant principal at Toro Canyon Middle School, effective Friday, July 14, on this uh, 13th day, July 2023. Motion was made by Mr. Gonzalez, seconded by Trustee Arredondo, and the motion passed. And the board took action on the following items in closed session. Approved expulsion case number 22 backslash 23-012 for clear reinstatement. Motion was made by Trustee Gonzalez, seconded by Trustee Arredondo, and the motion passed. And the last item, uh, the board took action on the following item, approved expulsion case number 2022 backslash 23-002 for clear reinstatement. Motion was made by Trustee Gonzalez, uh, seconded by myself, and the motion passed. Thank you, Ms. Vargas. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? All motion. Second. Second. Second by motion by Mr. Gonzalez. Second by Mr. Redondo. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Aye. Motion carries. Second. Um, board notification request to address the board. Uh, at this time, we will entertain public comment, comments from the public. Um, please be aware that the public, that the board is not always at liberty of responding or taking actions on items not listed on the adopted agenda. Um, and we can't always respond. Um, so we'll have uh, Billy Franco. Good evening. Uh, I'm, my name is Billy Franco. I'm the instructional media assistant at Desmarage High School. Uh, according to the California Department of Education website, school libraries help prepare students to live and learn in a world of information. The mission of school libraries is to ensure that students and staff are able to use ideas and information. As of the 22-23 school year, Desert Mirage High School has been utilizing the library in many ways that does not include the intended purpose of providing a space for students to access information by means of books and or electronic devices. The library is also shared with Toro Canyon Middle School. Uh, it has been used as a storage space for students that were not, and students that were not allowed to enter. Administration from both schools had allowed this. This past year, I was promoted to an instructional media assistant position for this library, taking care of Desmarais High School students and staff. When I started my first day on Monday, August 1st, 2022, the library was virtually unusable. There were unused technology carts that were supposed to be in each classroom stored in the library. There were pallets of books left unattended, books from the previous year in big piles on the floor, trash left scattered all over the library, 
Library books on shelves not organized correctly while collecting years of dust. If you ask me, this is not what a school library should look like. I started the arduous task of cleaning up the library so that it could at least be presentable for students when they would start their first day of school. I, along with long-term sub, worked tirelessly for a few weeks, cleaning and moving textbooks to our textbook storage room. By the time the school started, the library was now looking like a functioning library. Staff members would come in to ask questions or check out materials and saw the library. They would often make comments like, I did not know we had a full library. I thought the back side was a storage room. Uh, when students would come in, a lot of them did not know that, uh, that they could be in there during non-instructional times. Uh, they're always told that they could not be in the library. From then, I made it my mission to ensure that all students uh, were able to have access to the library when they needed it. Because of uh, the library being clean and usable, the principal, Ms. Elizabeth Sotelo, utilized it for um, utilized it for many different occasions. She had library uh, bookshelves removed from one side of the library to make space for the College and Career Center. At this time, I did, not, I did not know this would be an issue because I felt that this would mean more students would be able to come in and use the library. This was not the case. The, career, the College and Career Center was used less than 1% of the school year, and that was after school for the fast and night. It re remained empty and abandoned for the rest of the school year. Over the past few weeks, it has come to our attention that Ms. Sotelo wants to block off that whole section of the, of the library and have it strictly for the College and Career Center, but not having access to the library. Uh, she's hoping to use portable wall panels to block off and divide the space. Can I continue? I don't know. Okay. Um, she's also trying to force my fellow IMA from Toro Canyon to give his storage space for student textbooks and materials so that she can move the parent liaison to the back of the library and have that area closed off too. I have spoken to her already about the issue and told her that closing the off the two areas would effectively eliminate two fire exits from the library. She said that it's not an issue because the panels are portable so they can be moved. I do not think she understands that, that when there is a fire, you should not have to move wall panels in order to exit a building to save your life. The library was also closed down throughout the year during instructional time because it was used by DM to do testing. Tora Ken was not able to reserve and use the library this past year. Ms. Sotelo has been bogarting the shared library all year. It is, it is disheartening that Ms. Sotelo is being allowed to, by district personnel to dismantle and downsize the school library for her needs instead of finding an alternative option like putting in a portable for the College of Career Center and parent liaisons. At the rate she is going, we will not have a school library for Toro Canyon Middle School or Desmond Rush High School. She is already bullying her way to get what she wants. CSA has already contacted Dr. Williams about the issue but has yet to hear a solution. She's already taken up spaces in, in the front office that was intended for Toro Canyon. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, moving on to electronic comments. Um, we had one submitted. Um, Andrea Nunez, subject ratification of the May 2023 expenses and encumbrances per education code 17604 for agenda item 14.1. Desert concepts, concepts maintenance contracts. Why does CVUSD contract out maintenance services when it has a maintenance department? For the month of May 2000, 2023, CVUSD expanded monies on 32 contracts, POs to Desert Concepts, totaling 499,668 and 13 cents. $500,000 in one month. How many individuals could be employed with this amount? Why does CVUSD fail, fail to employ the people needed to perform these contracted jobs? More importantly, how does CSEA allow this to happen? That's all. Thank you. Uh, moving on to board member reports, uh, Mr. Okuya. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I see the crowd gets smaller and smaller as it gets hotter and hotter, I'd say. Um, just real quick, a couple of things. I did was able to visit some of the summer school sites as we were going through. I think uh, uh, I think it went well. Uh, I think it went well. I think uh, you know some of the kids were having fun. Uh, some of the programs were great. I, I, I wish we had better uh, attendance. I think, you know, if we maybe hopefully for next year, we can start a lot earlier recruiting and we can get more kids out there. Um, but, uh, but I thought it went, it went well. 
Uh, secondly, I did attend the um, summer graduations at uh, CV High School and at Desert Mirage. I, I apologize, I didn't, wasn't able to make the other ones, uh, but I thought it was really nice. I thought that it was um, uh, the way they set it up. So the kids actually got to wear their cap and gown. They got to be there, their families were there and it was, and it was an accomplishment. And I did um, you know, commend them that they could have thrown in the towel and just kind of be done with it, but they stuck it out. They made it and they came through and they, and they graduated. And it was funny because as soon as I got home at, at noon, I got, a, I got a text from, uh, from one of the instructors that said, oh, by the way, we graduated another four. They just passed their test. So it was nice. They were able to go back. They had left it set up. So they were able to go back and take pictures and do stuff. So I thought, I think it's really important to, to really support those, those students that, that take that extra effort to, to finish what they started. And, and as I told them, they've already, they've already learned the most important rule of life that don't quit. And so I think uh, it was really nice to see that. And I know their families are very appreciative of it. So it was a, it was a really good event. So, and uh, that's it. Um, Ms. Garcia. Thank you. Um, I was able to attend the RCOE Educational Services Summit. Um, oh gosh, what week is it? Um, it was two weeks ago. Um, and it was really amazing to see our program shine. Um, we got to present our CTE programming. Um, I got to see what others in the Valley are doing. Um, people are aware of what our district is doing and how amazing our programs are. Um, I loved seeing what our neighboring school districts were doing and able to talk to our staff about how we could implement um, what I see is the future as far as um, our sciences, our computer sciences, and really getting those to um, work with what I see future jobs as being. So it was really neat to have those important conversations with our staff, um, getting to know our new staff. So it was really um, enlightening to see, um, always great to see what our communities are doing here. So it was really important work that our people are doing, important to see what everyone else is aware of. Um, so it was really, really neat and um, look forward to continuing to have those conversations with our staff. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I wanna apologize. I've only missed one board meeting and that was last, last board meeting, um, but I got to attend an, an awesome uh, conference in Guadalajara which is HACU, the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities, and really learned about the opportunities we have to do some cross-cultural learning and, uh, with teachers in Mexico and really strengthen some of our math programs here at Coachella Valley Unified School District. We actually invited a few professors to come visit, and I hope we are able to follow up on that, Mr. President. Um, second of all, was it also able to attend the CV graduation? Just want to thank our, 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 uh, all the staff that you know, made summer school happen also. And the, with the summer graduation, just like, you know, those students, I'm glad that they were able to make it and, and, and graduate. So that was that was awesome. Um, a couple of things that I just want to speak to, I was able to see today, I walked over and seen the La Fines back expansion. And I'm I'm happy to see that hopefully next year we'll have 100, 100 additional students attending uh, La Familia. And uh, with the understanding that they, they come back to graduate from their home high school, uh, according to Dr. Esparza. Um, so uh, thank you for that. Um, also, the weight room at CB High School is now refreshed and it's beautiful. Thank you to staff who, who made that happen. We got two new weight rooms at CB High School, which are just beautiful. Was able to walk there today. Um, also looking forward to a couple of items that uh, address track issues at our two high schools. I think that's important. Um, so I, I think uh, looking forward as we start, as we prepare for the next school year, and I, I just want to say that thank you to staff for the work that you are doing. Uh, we, 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 we know that it, it takes all of us to work together and to make it happen, right, and creatively for our students. Um, I just want to thank Dr. Esparza as she came on board. She requested a meeting, I'm sure, with all the board members, but um, she definitely laid out her vision for the district. Thank you for doing that, Dr. Sparza. I know that a, a couple of times, you know, we disagreed, but we were able to move forward. And I think that that was very important. It's a test, testament to your leadership. And so thank you for taking the time to be with me. Um, 
And with that, just want to say, like I said, thank you again to all the staff that are working through the summer, getting us prepared for the upcoming school year so that our students are ready to the, the first day of school. So thank you. That's my report. Thank you, sir. Um, Ms. Vargas? Yeah. I'll keep my comments brief. Um, I also attended the RCOE Educational Service Summit and um, just want to thank Ms. Parati for a great presentation. And um, just uh, it was great to kind of hear about uh, a great partnership and initiative with RCOE. Um, so, yeah, it was good. thank you for your great work. Um, and then yesterday I had the opportunity to uh, be here um, for um, an event, I don't know that we tit it was titled something, but um, you know, through a partnership with One Future Coachella Valley, there was a, an effort to really kind of target the students that maybe graduated, didn't really have a plan. And so um, I thought it was a great idea um, to really try to encourage them to, you know, continue their post-secondary education. So uh, thank you to um, Lindsay and um, the team that partnered to do that. Um, it was a great event. I know there were a lot of, um, both COD and, and other organizations were here and it was great to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez. I have no report to. Thank you. Um, as far as for me, um, these last couple of weeks have been busy. Um, I, along with uh, Mr. Arredondo, attended the uh, Hispanic Association of College Universities International Symposium in Guadalajara, Jalisco, where we got the opportunity to engage with uh, high-level diplom educational diplomatics on both sides of the uh, of the country, right? We were able to meet uh, uh, assistant assistant deputy sec assistant sec assistant de deputy assistant secretary uh, for academic programs uh, in the U.S. Department of of the, the Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs for the U.S. Department, right? Uh, we were able to exchange information, and we've been in contact with them about what different programs they have and what programs we, we can work on. Uh, that's one thing. Another, we were also, I was able, also able to make connection with um, El Fondo Cultural y Económico of Mexico, which is uh, a bank for books all across uh, Mexico, right? And uh, they have uh, that government agency or does, does partnerships with with school districts across the United States, they have a partnership with with Palm Springs currently, where um, Palm Springs Unified buys books from cultural books, children books uh, from from uh, from Mexico and and that department, um, which I think is a very a very cool opportunity for us as well to engage in something similar as we have our dual language program and given the the, the population of students that we serve are. You know, a lot of a lot of the majority of them are uh, first language Spanish speaking, right? So, uh, definitely very excited for what what can come out of these trips, um, these conferences that we've we've gone to, um, and continue to build uh, partnerships. So, uh, yeah, I'm also excited that we will be uh, becoming members of of the, Husk, the of the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities. And you, you guys might wonder why colleges and universities if we're a K through 12, uh, but uh, Haku also has a district path, right? Where they have uh, they have programs and, 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 and partnerships with K through 12 uh, school systems across the state as well. Uh, I myself was a student when I first got engaged uh, with Haku at the college level. I attended one of their, their national conferences and uh, learned a lot about what they do, uh, felt the support that they give students uh, throughout their educational journey. So I myself think it's very important and very critical, right? And, and impactful that we start building that relationship. So with that being said, I'll close up my remarks, Dr. Valentino. Thank you, Mr. Galarza. Um, so as, as you pointed out, the, the power of a conference is not only the interactions with other leaders, but also the opportunity to learn from the, the presentations, um, much like Ms. Prati has been doing, taking it on the road this past month and uh, engaging with others on the road of CTE. We also had the opportunity to send a large contingent of staff that included principals and teachers to the AVID conference um, in San Diego. And so for a whole week, they were there working um, collaboration with each other on AVID. It was either San Diego or Anaheim, I'm not sure. 
And also we attended the CALSA conference um, in San Diego, a group of leaders, both site administrators and district office uh, teams to learn about um, the Latino student, the Latino educator, meeting, addressing the needs of Latinos and other students of color. And so that was a great opportunity to collaborate with the teams from our school sites um, who, who also joined um, a group of us there. We had a job fair towards the end of the school year. Dr. Alice led a team on June 26, where we had 225 um, attendees. Um, there were 25 classified contracts that were actually written and 20 certificated interviews took place. So that's really exciting because one of the things, as you know, that we're trying to do before the year begins is to be fully staffed across the district, which is something that hasn't happened. And so we're really excited about being able to do that. Um, and finally, I am happy to report that the classes that had been used for the care rooms during COVID, that uh, they will now be returned back to the school. Um, and they will be used as either parent centers or career uh, college career centers. So that's all I have. Uh, Thanks, sir. Mr. President. Uh -huh. Moving on, um, 6.1 presentations, uh, Beatriz Gonzalez, Expanded Learnings and Kiwanis Collaboration. Uh, good afternoon. President uh, Galarza, board members, Superintendent Valentino. Um, we come before you today to, on a presentation on a new collaboration that we will be um, entering into with the expanded learning um, program. And with me here, I'll, I'll have them introduce themselves. Um, so this collaboration is gonna be between the expanded learning programs and the Kiwanis, for the Kiwanis of the greater Coachella Valley. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, and thank you for having us. Um, and thank you for serving. It is extremely important how volunteers of the world make the changes. And normally those changes start with the little ones. Um, last year, for the first time, I became at awe with Kiwanians, even though I've been around them for a while. I have a teenage granddaughter who lives here in the desert. And after the pandemic and hitting teenage itis, she went backwards, holding the highest GPA average in science. All of a sudden, she just gave up. No more folklorico, no more helping grandma as she volunteers. And my partner had an idea, let's go ahead and send her to camp, which she did last August in San Diego. What they fed them, what they gave her, what water she drank, I got my granddaughter back. And that's why I am here. As a proud grandmother, but more importantly, to be able to provide the opportunities that Kiwanians provide for all of the kids from the disabled all the way up to college. My name is Nina Duarte. I was a 50 year resident of Ventura County, having moved here for the past 10 years. And now that I am retired, even before I retired, I've been serving the communities in which I live for the past 42 years. Thank you. Hi, thank you for having us here today. My name is um, Stephen Finch. I'm a, as it says, a retired elementary school, middle school principal from Washington State. Um, the first day in 1990, when I became a principal, uh, the, the former principal came to my office and said, you're going to lunch with me today. It was, it was on Wednesday. So, okay, that's my third day of work. I'm going to do what he says. And I went to my first Kiwanis Club meeting. Um, and, and I found a group of, of, of dedicated people in a community who are willing to do anything to support kids in my school. And in return, what I found was a community that needed the, that partnership with the, with the school, not just to help kids, but to also grow our community. The, the mission statement of Kiwanis is we are a global, Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to changing the world, one child and one community at a time. I retired in 2018 and moved to the Coachella Valley and spent a lot of time hiking and doing other things and and 
the opportunity came to be part of the new Qantas Club, uh, the Coachella Valley. And, and, and then the opportunity came to be here to talk to you today about what Kiwanis can do for your community and what together we can do for the community at large. Um, so I, I'm excited to be part of this effort. I'm thrilled to meet B and, and, and thrilled to, to be able to work with, you know, all of you, your schools, your principals, your teachers, and most especially um, your students. The most recent thing I did is I attended the Key Club International Convention in Anaheim last week. Um, Key Club is the high school equivalent. It's a leadership and service and fellowship organization, uh, uh, extracurricular activity for schools. And so I'm, I'm kind of taking over some of the reins of Key Club, not just for this area, but for also for the, the Palm Springs School District as well. So I'm excited to, to be here to, uh, to start to work with you. Thank you. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you already um, heard uh, uh, Nina and, and Stephen mention some of the work that the Kiwanis do. Um, but as you can see here, and I don't want to be redundant and read slides, um, but they there is a lot of programs. There's a lot of possibility when uh, Nina reached out to me um, and started talking to me about these opportunities. I was like, wow, we could do just so much um, to expand our leadership um, through our after school programs. So um, that's what really, you know, caught my attention. And um, I always, uh, you know, feel very honored that folks will reach out, um, you know, to, to us because they recognize the impact that expanded learning programs have in our school district. And of course, you know, that wouldn't happen with all of your support and the partnerships that we're able to, to build. Uh, so the next steps for us now is, you know, to go through the proper channels. You see that, Lawrence? I pay attention when you send emails. So we we're going to make sure that, you know, all the proper clearances and documentation is, uh, is uh, you know, followed. So we follow through and ensure that everything is submitted. And we're looking at possibly starting the program about October when the students are, you know, get to get back to school and, and settle in. Uh, and here's, you know, some of the steps that, that we feel would be the best in trying to, to roll out the program. Um, and engaging uh, students. Uh, one of the things that I really like that they do is they work with uh, our, our uh, senior citizen population. And, you know, I, I know some of you I've had conversations with where I really want, wanted to do a program where we would bring in abuelita and abuelito, you know, and, and I think sometimes our students maybe don't have grandparents. You know, during the pandemic, our, our families, uh, you know, were dismantled unfortunately, by tragedy. And I think it'd be a great opportunity for our kids to have, uh, you know, an abuelita or an abuelito that maybe they, they don't connect with. And um, here's uh, the structure that we're looking at. So uh, we're looking at, um, you know, having uh, our site liaisons, which will be, you know, our coordinators. And again, expanding uh, the program, definitely focusing on character building, inclusiveness, Caring, that was a question that I asked when I, you know, first talked to them. I said, you know, are you compliant with, uh, you know, inclusion and diversity and equity? And of course they are. Uh, so I was really excited um, to hear that their mission aligned um, with ours. Did you want to add anything? Just, I just want to add a comment about diversity, um, equ equity, and inclusion. Um, three or four days ago at, at the convention, the, the kids, I mean, and I'm always so impressed with young people. You get high school kids together, you get 800 of them in a room and they do amazing things. But they took the, the, uh, the objects of the key club and they added, uh, a fifth, they added a 15th object. And it is to support uh, div uh, diversity and inclusion and equity. And they did it by a margin of 98 and a half to one. Um, so, you know, the, the idea that, that there's question about that in, in the politics, no, our kids know. You know, the young people know, and I was so proud of the Key Club for making that a part of their, you know, a fundamental part of who we're going to be as an organization. Thank you for that. And uh, with that, that is our, our short presentation. Um, as I mentioned, you know, this is a, we wanted to, to bring this information to you. And just so you know that we're going to be working on this. And once we have all the proper clearances and, and we have our structure, set up, then we're going to go ahead and, and move forward. So any questions? For any questions from board members? Seeing, 
Thank you and uh, welcome and thank you for all your work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Moving into action items, uh, action item 7.1, approval for uh, for Dr. Valentino to participate in an in, in, in out-of-state conference in Chicago, Illinois. Second. There's a motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Mr. Arredondo. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Uh, action item 8.1. Requesting approval of 2023-2024 renewal contract agreement with Los Angeles Indigenous Peoples Alliance. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez. Second by Mr. Arredondo. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Action item 8.2. Uh, requesting approval of independent contract services with our River City County Latino Commission for CVUSD mental health crisis. So move. Motion by Mr. Arredondo. Second. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Action item 8.4, requesting approval to purchase AVAT language assessment for ninth grade placements, dual language assessments, and CO by literacy qualification. That, um, did you, did you, I think you. Oh, I skipped one, sorry. Action item 8.3, requesting approval of arts, music, and instructional material discretionary block grant. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second. second by Mr. Redondo. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, 6-0. Action item 8.4, requesting approval to purchase Avant language assessments for ninth grade placement, dual language assessments, and CO of, of biliteracy qualification for high school students. Uh, uh, so, so move. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez, uh, by Mr. Arredondo, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Action item 8.5, requesting approval to issue a purchase order to uh, McLeod Technologies to replace the fiber uplink from John Kelly Elementary School to the district office data center. Second. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Mr. Arredondo. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Action item 8.6, requesting approval of revised fiscal year 2022-2024 expanded learning purchase orders for ESSER 3 and ELOP programs through June 2024 to support Expanded learning programs. Motion. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez. Second. Second by Mr. Acuna. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? I just have a comment. I would have liked that the EL ELOP plan would have been used more creatively and that the funding would have been used more creatively. So that's that's my comment. Thank you, sir. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I oppose. Uh, abstain? Motion carries 5-1. Uh, action item 8.6, uh, 8.7, uh, requesting approval for parents, staff to attend uh, CABE conference in Anaheim, California, February 21 to 24. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Ms. Vargas. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries 6 0. Uh, action item 8.8, .8, requesting approval of fiscal year 2023-2024 purchase orders for the community engagement program. So moved. Motion by Mr. Arredondo. Second. Second by Ms. Vargas. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Any questions, comments, and concerns? Seeing none. Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 6-0. Six, six action item 9.1, agreement of a B Approval of agreement between CVUSD and InterQuest Detection Canines for 2023-2024. So moved. Motion by Mr. Arredondo. I'll second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Uh, just through the record, it was motioned by Mr. Arredondo, second by Mr. Galarza. Uh, Action item 9.2, adoption resolution number 2024-02, use of California multiple award schedule, contract number 4127800638 a to Benyon Sports Surfaces. So moved. Sorry. Motion by Mr. Arredondo, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Action item 9.3, request approval accepting Benyon Sports Surfaces uh, incorporation proposal to repair, restore, and restripe Desert Mirage High School track surface. Motion, Motion by Mr. Second. Gonzalez, second by Mr. Arredondo. Any questions, comments, or concerns? I, I just have a comment. Uh, Go ahead, sir. 
Yeah, it's. Uh, I think this work was long overdue, and it's exciting to see that uh, we're going to bring these feedback up to par. And, um, it's it's just really a good one. I think it's a good one. Okay. Good work to the facilities committee. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Uh, action item 9.4. Request approval accepting Benyon Sports Surfaces Incorporation to a proposal to replace Coachella Valley High School track surface, uh, California multiple award schedule. So moved. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Mr. Arredondo. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Action item 9.5, custodial equipment replacement uh, plan to year with Advantage West. Second. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Mr. Arredondo. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries 6-0. Action item 9.6, authorization to enter into a five-year lease agreement with Quadian Leasing USA Incorporation. So moved. Motion by Mr. Arredondo. Awesome. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Action item 9.7, adoption resolution number 2024 authorizing filing of applications for the California Preschool Transitional Kindergarten and Full Day Kindergarten Facilities Grant Program. So moved. Motion by Mr. Arredondo, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Authorization action item 9.8 authorization to enter an agreement for state inspection services for Alameda Elementary School play field and outdoor learning spaces. So moved. Motion by Mr. Arredondo. Second. second by Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Action item 9.9 .9, authorization to enter into an agreement for laboratory of record services for North Shore Elementary School. So moved. Motion by Mr. Arredondo, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Action item uh, 9.10, authorization to enter an agreement for laboratory of record services for Palmview Elementary School permanent housing and playfield. So moved. Motion by Mr. Arredondo, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Action item 9.11, authorization to issue a purchase orders for labor compliance monitoring services for various projects. So, so moved. Motion by Mr. Arrabando. Second by Mr. Gonzalez. Questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Action item 10.1, approval of initial reopener session proposal from Coachella Valley Unified School District to Coachella Valley Teachers Association for 2023. 24 contract negotiations. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez. I'll second. Second by Ms. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Action item 10.2, approval of initial reopener sunshine from Coachella Valley Unified School District to CSEA and its chapters 109 for 2023-24 uh, contract negotiations. Motion second. by Mr. Gonzalez. Second by Mr. Arredondo. Questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Approval of MOU between CVTA and CVUSD regarding increased stipend for dual immersion, BCLAD classroom teachers. Motion, Motion by second. Mr. Arredondo, second by Ms. Vargas. Any questions, comments, concerns? Arredondo, you said? Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, sorry. Sorry. Uh, motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second by Ms. Vargas. Uh, no questions, comments, concerns. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Uh, motion carries. Action item 10.4. Um, have to read something before we take a motion. The recommended contract for assistant superintendent of educational services will be for a three-year term commencing on June 12, 2023 and ending on June 30, 2026 for an annual salary of 211, uh, 211,990 with 83 cents for the 2023, 2022-2023 uh, school year and an annual salary of 230,000 for the 2023-2024 school year. 
Based on 247 day work year, the assistant superintendent of educational services will receive the same health and welfare benefits offered to management personnel consistent with board policy. The benefits cap for management personnel, as well as other district personnel, is 21,655. Motion. motion by Mr. Gonzalez, second, second by Mr. Acuna. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns? I just, my understanding was a very different structure. So this just looks very different than our conversation last meeting. Um, I wasn't here for last meeting. Yeah. Um, do I guess my question is where where are the where are the differences? Um, remember the um, the attorney took the information that you had provided to generate this document, um, and the conversation she had had with you and sent it to you as a draft. My understanding was that it had been cleared with board members because you had seen the draft. So I and and I wasn't privy to what was shared, so I I don't have an answer about what what's the difference between this and what you had discussed. It, yeah, it, so I, I call for the question. Sounds good. Um, yeah, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Motion carries six zero. Uh, congratulations. Action item ten point five: Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Uh, the recommended contract amendment for the assistant superintendent of HR includes a 9% adju salary adjustment effective July 1st, 2022, which results in an annual base salary of $211,990.83 for the 2022-2023 school year based on a 247-day work year. This represents an equivalent adjustment received by the district's unrepresented confidential management employees and unit members of CVTA and CSEA. Additionally, the recommended contract amendment for the assistant superintendent of HR includes a new annual base salary beginning with the 2023-2024 school year of 230000 a year based on a 247-day work year. Motion by Mr. Acuna, second by Mr. Gonzalez. Questions, comments, concerns? Is, is this a... Um, go ahead, call for the question. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Abstain? Motion carries 510. Uh, so agenda 10.6, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services. Uh, the recommended contract amendment for Assistant Superintendent of Business Services includes a 9% salary adjustment effective July 1, 2022, which results in an annual base salary of 211990 uh, with 83 cents for the 2022-2023 school year. Based on a 247-day work year, this represents an equivalent adjustment received by the district's unrepresented confidential management employees and unit members of CBTA and CSEA. Additionally, the recommended contract amendment for the Assistant Superintendent of Business Services includes a new annual base salary beginning with the 2023-2024 school year of 230 a year, 230,000 a year based on a 247-day work year. Almost. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez. Is there a second? Yes. Second by Mr. Acuna. Um, questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, other um, this contract goes to the end of her original three year contract, correct? Yes, thank you. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed, uh, abstain. Motion carries 510. Uh, okay, oh, good. Consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the board to be routine and will be acted upon in one motion. There will be no discussion of these items prior to the time the board considers a motion unless members of the board or staff request specific items to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar in which event the items will be considered separately. The superintendent, assistant superintendent of educational services, assistant superintendent of business and finance and assistant superintendent of HR recommend the approval of all consent calendar items. Motion to approve the consent calendar and respecting anybody wanting to pull an individual item. Motion by Mr. Gonzalez. Oh, second. Second by Mr. Arredondo. Anybody want to pull any items? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries 6 0. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion second. by Mr. Gonzalez. Second by Mr. Arredondo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Meeting adjourned at 742.